Hey guys, I'm here with an unboxing. I wanted to do it live just for fun because I never do these. I almost always record prematurely, but today we're gonna do it on the live stream. What do you think can come in a box this size? So this might give it away, but this was actually <laughs> purchased from Nikki Button, which is really quite cool because Nikki Button is amazing. <laughs> I feel like live unboxings add an element of mutual surprise <laughs> more so than a recorded unboxing. So this parcel has been sitting in my my studio for like four days. I've been waiting to open it, but I just have been so busy. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but the last three months have been the busiest three months of probably my life. It's been insane, and it's only gonna get worse as we get closer to Briarfest. <laughs> I'm actually participating in Briarfest this year, which is really exciting. So I'm trying to like cover my address. I don't know if I can pull it off the box because I will screw it up. I'm just gonna pull my address off the box. That's fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> so now I can open it majestically like this and look inside before you do. <laughs> what could it possibly be? <laughs> I think that gives it away. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> there we have it. It's a little micro. So this is, she gave me the card for it too. This is a spatter dock. It's the January 2021 micro. So it should actually have a base too, hopefully. I hope that would be a problem if it didn't come with the base. Um, but he's really cute. He's super cool. Um, there's a couple more things in this box. So don't leave the stream quite yet. Um, but I've seen this guy painted up a few times and he looks super awesome. So I'm really excited to have one and Nikki Button just happened to be selling a couple of these guys. So <laughs> it is going to be a box of micros. Very exciting. She had really good prices on everybody. So I wanted to paint some of these guys up for Briarfest. I think that'd be really fun. Oh my God, this guy's crazy. What? That's absurd. This is the fancy fighting Mustang who's like super angry. His mouth is so real for like a micro. He's got like the two little teeth and everything. She does a really good job of these, Maggie does. Really cool. Uh, what I like though is I definitely do like the pewter ones because I find that they like have more stability than the resin based ones. The resin based ones stress me out a little bit, not gonna lie. Okay, here we go. So we have some bases. So. Okay, well, you can tell that it's Motor and Torora. So I have no idea how these bases work. We're gonna find out right now. Yeah, micro haze. Woo! <laughs> That's so cool. He's funky, man. Super funky. Oh, I see. There's like a separate card for each of them. So, Terora and Motor. Here's the other guy to match the set. Oh, he's cool. Damn. He's so angry. I have a secret obsession with angry horses. I love the expression that they make when they're like just vile like because horses are such docile gentle creatures mostly and that's how we view them and like that's how all my personal horses are so when they really like get mad it's like I didn't think something so pretty could get so angry <laughs> I guess that's like most human girls though <laughs> so the two of them they connect they connect in like that and make like a team of fighters that is so cool oh my god i'm so very excited to paint these guys they're wicked and this is the last one it is Raphael, i believe his name is 
And I've always liked him. I've seen him resailed a couple times, but I've always really liked him. This person <laughs> asks who sculpted them, and all of these were sculpted by Maggie Bennett, and she does the monthly micro club, but I haven't been subscribed to her club. I feel like I should. I just find the ones I like secondhand for the most part. I have been looking for a squirrel. So if anybody has a squirrel or like a couple squirrels, I would be all over that because I have wanted to paint a micro squirrel since it came out and she had two of them in this sale and I missed both of them. I was so upset. So I have a plethora of micros, like I said, and I'm hoping to paint like a ton of them for Briarfest. We'll see if that plan goes. Um, I've had a couple that have been on stock for a while. Um, I'm trying not to like be too vocal about Briarfest because I don't know exactly what I will get finished. Um, I have some stuff that already is finished and ready for this like the weekend, but the micros I definitely would like to do. So I'll just spend a second to answer some questions. If anybody has questions, burning desires that want, you know, a face-to-face -face answer versus a typed answer. Um, I'll sit on here for a couple more minutes, but not too long because I do have to actually like get ready for bed here. It's a little bit late. This person asks, what is your favorite white marking? That's a tough question. I don't know. I feel like I like all kinds of white markings. I like adding white markings, especially to the face, just because it brings additional life. <laughs> um, I guess Appaloosas are a lot of fun too. I guess we'll need like suggestions on what colors to paint these guys. This one is going to be an Appaloosa for sure. Uh, Stable Style asks, when did you start to paint models and why? I have a whole video on this actually in my YouTube channel. It explains my whole model horse journey from like the beginning. Um, but essentially I was working in the animation industry, the movie industry, um, on the computer all day and I was really frustrated with the fact that I was wasting my life on the computer, so I um, attempted to get some stable mates and customize because I liked briar horses. I also liked painting, so it kind of made sense, and it kind of just took off from there. But it was, yeah, mostly a plea to get away from the digital world and have a more physical space to create art in. Um, I had tried customizing when I was like 13, but it never amounted to anything so I knew of customizing I just never really got into it until I was like forced to work on a computer for eight hours a day which is kind of interesting um any tips for people getting into customizing my biggest thing is just do the thing <laughs> like just paint just practice just try like you're never gonna get good if you just wait to start essentially so like the biggest thing is practice and customizing, learning how to do it right and well just takes a long time and a lot of experience and experimentation and failure of what works for you and what doesn't work for you. So my biggest piece of advice is just to start today and it doesn't have to be good. Your first pieces don't have to be good, um, but you just have to like launch into it. So I think you can do all the research you want but ultimately it doesn't come down to it until like you actually try and I find this big with actually real horses I've always wanted to like work with training methods and I'll watch videos till I'm blue in the face and then I get out there with a lunge line and my horse and I it <laughs> it doesn't work so until you actually like physically try and practice and proceed you won't get good Favorite repaint and custom. This question comes up a lot and it's really hard to say exactly who is my favorite. Um, my favorites are all of the ones that I have kept for myself personally. Um, but the two biggest pieces in my hobby life so far have definitely been Jorg and Bacillus. And I have no intentions of ever selling them because they're kind of the monumental pieces that like got me noticed by Briar, got me noticed on Instagram and have won tons of awards and photo shows. So I find those two as my favorites if I had to choose, you know, specifics. And I don't think I could pick between the two of them. Do you have any good tips on how to do good paint jobs with just acrylic paints and brushes? I don't know how to blend colors very well. Hand painting acrylics, I think is, it's actually one of the most challenging ways to paint a model. And it makes the most sense because it's the easiest medium to use, but 
the application of the paints is so important and it's hard. So my biggest thing that I have to advise is just using really thin coats. So you're gonna wanna water that paint down quite a bit. And that's where getting a good high quality paint can be really beneficial because then you can actually dilute it down with still keeping the opacity. Um, otherwise, it's kind of just a patience thing, lots of layers, lots of water, um, and you can mess around with makeup brushes as well. Um, you can get these beauty blender sponges and you can use those to kind of help blend colors. I haven't, don't have a ton of experience in painting acrylics by hand. I want to do more of that and kind of leap into the tutorial side of that, um, but it is a little bit daunting even for me. Have you seen a peacock Appaloosa? Yes, I have, and his name is Wicket, and he's really cool. Everybody under the sun has sent me a picture of that horse. <laughs> um, He's very, very cool. I don't know if I would ever paint one in that color. Kind of looks like a fungi to me, but it's very, very neat. What is your least favorite color to paint? My least favorites are cremellos or anything with blue eyes. So like double dilutes, I don't care for. Um, I would paint like a pale, ap or pale palomino, but I do not like cremello, perlino. Any of those colors where the horses have pink skin and blue eyes. I do not like blue eyes in horses or pink skin. It bothers me a lot. Um, I'm not a huge fan of like bald faced horses either for that reason, unless they have black eyeliner around the blue eye, then it's okay. But I really just am not attracted to those colors in the least. I see the rearing guy as a blue roan over a... Mm, that's a fancy color. I see him as an Overo too. I should do like a black Overo. I've wanted to do a black Overo Mustang for a while. It's just hard because no one pays, like black is the least desirable color. Like no one pays good money for black because everybody does black because they assume it's the easiest color, but it's one of the most challenging colors because it takes so many layers. But for micros, definitely can see some black happening there. What was your favorite cartoon as a kid? It's a good question. I've never really been super into cartoons. I used to watch the like the family channel when I was a teenager. Um, so I like, I don't know what cartoons were even on at that point. It's like the proud family is the first one that comes to mind. The weekend weekenders. That one was like one of my favorites. Um, pretty much anything on Family Channel I exclusively watched growing up. Um, but I've never been like too crazy about cartoons. And even now, I don't know, I've never, it's not really my fancy. Have you ever painted a, I'm gonna say that wrong, a chimera? I think it's chimera slash somatic mutation. I have not. I don't love it in models because it kind of looks wrong. <laughs> I find that those really unique horses they don't come across as well in the model world unless you have really specific reference but even then they're just a little off-putting and I don't find them super attractive in a way um, so I just kind of paint what I find beautiful and that's kind of more those elaborate paints and Appaloosas um, and unique crosses more so than like genetic mutation I'm 15 and starting to customize. It isn't going so well yet, but I love it. I'm getting some epoxy and an airbrush for my birthday next week. Congratulations, that's super exciting. That's how it all starts. Um, the airbrush is how it kind of started for me. I love airbrushing and um, epoxy is a lot of fun. So just keep on keeping on and you'll get there. Um, how long does it take to paint a model? It varies depending on the size. So I find this actually really interesting because micros I can paint in a couple of hours. It takes me about like four hours to paint an entire micro start to finish. Um, stable mates can take anywhere from that five hour range to like a whole day, so like eight hours. Um, I painted one recently. That little, actually the Appaloosa Fjord that I painted, that took just an entire day. It was one day of eight hours of work. 
Um, <clears throat> and I finished him. For traditional stuff, it can take a couple of months. Um, you know, start to finish, it's hard to know because like Humbug, I painted in a week. Um, but like Todd took the entire month of Nami Pemo to finish. Jorg took me, I think, two months to paint. He took a while. Um, so it really depends on the complexity. Uh, but for the most part, like traditionals take a long time. Stable mates are pretty fast and micros are even faster. Like I've pumped out, I think, two or three micros in one day before. So <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, you are doing amazing. Thanks for the inspiration. You're so welcome. Thank you. I love all your customs. They are amazing. Thank you. You guys are awesome. I've learned everything from watching your YouTube channel. I'm so glad that the YouTube channel is so well received. There really wasn't tutorials when I started and it was really frustrating because there's certain questions you want answered and you have to dig for them. Like you have to dig on Google and you shouldn't have to dig. So that's kind of what created the channel in the beginning. And I think it's definitely like been a big part of my success because I mean, I'm getting there with my paintwork, but I don't think my paintwork really has gotten me there. I think it's ultimately the YouTube channel and sharing, which is pretty cool. Any tips on sculpting next? I have a full YouTube tutorial on how to do that. It explains everything, so definitely go check that out. Have you ever been scammed <laughs> uh, by model horse people? No. I am very specific on who I purchase from, and I make sure that I check my references and I check everybody. I actually was gonna go through with a deal recently and then when I checked on Model Horse Transaction Board, that person had a ton of red lights, so I did not go through with it. Um, so that's like my biggest recommendation is always like check your lights and make sure that they don't have reds. <laughs> Um, I guess in a sense, I did make a video about two Huckleberry Bay models I got that I thought were new in box from the photographs and then came out of box and smashed together the whole way here and were super flawed. So that was kind of the worst thing that's happened, but scam wise, no, not necessarily. I've learned so much from your videos. Your one on dapples introduced me to an eraser pencil and it's such a game changer. I am obsessed with my eraser pencil. And as soon as you like get good and really start understanding dapples, it gets crazy. Like I could show you the last stable mate I just finished that hasn't been posted yet. This could be like a special live stream sneak peek, but my these dapples are getting intense and it is all just an eraser pencil it's magic i only have one friend who shares the love of model horses with me so i send your videos to her a lot oh that's so awesome i think the best part about the model horse community is that you can make so many cool friends on here and there's lots of people to always chat to and bounce ideas off of and so i don't share anyone particularly in like the physical form that likes models with me um, but I have lots of model friends and ultimate, ultimately when we all meet at Briarfest again, it'll be like one giant party. <laughs> That's how I imagine Briarfest. Is there any good way to paint dapples with acrylics and just brushes? I have that in a YouTube tutorial. It's how to paint dapples. Um, you can find that uh, on my YouTube channel. Have you ever seen, a s I say sleech, I don't know how you say it. Some people say sleck, sleech or collect A's. Um, Yes, I do, and I have a bunch of sleech bodies, and I have one collect day, but they're harder to prime. They like do weird things with the primers, so it like screwed up, and then I threw it in the body box, and I haven't touched it since. Um, but I do have a couple of those guys. They just scare me a little bit because they're rubber. I know you have commissions sometimes. What are the prices for them? You can find all my pricing information and commission information on my website, which is djb.com. Um, I answer that question too many times, so I just send people the link now. Like, if you're genuinely interested, all of the information is available. Like, you can find any of these questions most of the time on my website or through my YouTube in some way. How do you do your dapples and not lose them when adding the matte finish? Um, I use pan pastels, which are highly pigmented. So when you use, like, one to two layers of these guys they really don't 
eliminate. I also have kind of like a signature DJB method that makes this really easy. But I think definitely using pan pastels um, versus like a cheaper, you know, chalk pastel that you would get in a package uh, makes a world of difference. So I've never had that problem. I've only ever had it if I'm going to a light color. I know I did like an entire dapple coat on a horse once in white pastel and it looked so good. And then I sealed it and they all disappeared because it was white pastel and like you can't, <laughs> you can't do that. You have to work light to dark, not dark to light. What was your first model ever? Um, so collect wise, my very first briar or like my very first model. My very first model ever was actually a grand champion and it was this buckskin. I think it started my love of the buckskin horse way back when. Um, my favorite, my first briar ever uh, was actually the classic chestnut Arabian. Um, but then like my first real briar when I started collecting briars was treasured moves on the lady phase mold. How do I get into selling my models? What sorts of platforms should I use to advertise? I get this question a lot as well. I have a video and it's called what do my customs sell for on YouTube and it explains kind of the selling a little bit um, but for the most part I'm just Instagram, Facebook, sometimes I use Model Horse Place which is an auction site. It takes less fees than eBay so it's better in that sense um, but also Model Horse Sales Pages has a lot of activity so I definitely post on there because you get a lot of traction. So I post on all of them you know, I advertise on all of them. I use the different platforms in different ways. Okay, I'm down to the bottom now. So do you wanna see the stablemate? These 11 people that remain, you get good sneak peeks if you stick around. I'll get her, cause it would be cool to show you. Um, this person asked, how many models are you working on currently? I have <laughs> hundred and five, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. It's a lot. I have a lot and they're all in different phases. Like I have some in painting phases, I just have some in base coat phases, some in just primed phases, some in customizing phases. I have a couple with no heads, like no legs, <laughs> like there's tons and I think that just keeps it interesting because I think if I purely focus on sculpting too long, I go crazy. If I purely focus on painting too long, I go crazy. So I gotta like change it up enough to keep me interested. And I go through phases where like I enjoy painting more than sculpting or sculpting more than painting or whatever it is. So anyways, this is going to be my little stablemate who is not quite done yet, <laughs> but I completed her a little while ago and she doesn't show up as nice in the camera view as she does in reality. Um, but she's essentially hair by hair detailed dappled on the stablemate because I'm crazy. So I found a really good technique for this and this is all with that pastel pencil. So those dapples look super cool. So she just needs like final detailing, like eyes, hooves, um, tail, feathers, <clears throat> different things. So I don't see more than two hours into her and she should be complete. I don't think I'm gonna sell her either cause I really like this color and this like pose really turned out cute. So I'm excited to try more kind of solids in this technique that I have developed. <laughs> and techniques develop just by like painting a lot. And, you know, I think it's interesting because people recognize my work as having a style and I don't necessarily feel that it has a style because my style is always changing. <laughs> I have definitely evolved and I'm definitely getting more into a different realm of painting now, which is a really exciting realm to be in. Can you tell us some things about the sticker club? Of course, of course. So if you don't already know and you aren't already a part of it, I have a monthly sticker club. Essentially, you can sign up at any time and it's $7 Canadian a month for US and Canadian subscribers. And you will get a sticker shipped to your house every month. Um, the stickers will ship out on the first, but they kind of come in varying stages. I've had some people say that they take a little bit longer to show up. The post office is slow. Be patient. I live in Canada. They have to come from Canada, so it takes a while. Um, but it's a really cool club. All the designs are exclusive, so you can only get them through the monthly sticker club. 
Um, so maybe one day they will be collectible like Maggie's micros, who knows? <laughs> Um, but if you sign in, you can save your credit card on file so that it automatically charges every month. And this year's theme is H is for Horse, which is a collection of horse breeds from around the world. And they're all really, really cute. And I just will say that the first half of the year is like not my favorite. But as we go into the second half of the year, the stickers get really cool. So I highly suggest you join before the second half because you're gonna want all of them. Like after, yeah, starting in like May, which is the next sticker to come out, um, really good. So the Arabian sticker was for April and she already shipped. I shipped her actually the week, the last week of March. So hoping that you guys all get her within the month of April. Um, so it's really fun and I actually have I have plans to extend this club into the years to come um, 2022 is going to be epic so definitely don't miss out on this and get in the loop and join my mailing list um, to hear all about that Tried to make a dapple gray but it turned into a gorilla hey sometimes that happens if any of you remember my old Giselle custom that was a black and white paint she was a palomino which turned into, no, she was actually a bay first, and then I reprimed her, and then she was a palomino, I screwed up her dapples, so then she became a black, and then I painted pintos on her, pinto markings, and I sold her. So sometimes, even like the top artists, we screw up too, and we have oopsies, and it's just how you utilize it, and you learn from those mistakes. Sophie Grace got a sticker machine last week, and have been trying to create stickers. That is awesome. Sticker machines are super fun. I also have a sticker machine. Um, I'm still working up the kinks in my sticker machine. It's a, a industrial sticker machine though. It's not like a Cricut. It's like a full vinyl printer. What's the longest you spent finishing a model horse? Nine months? I can't remember. Um, Clive, the big trotting uh north swedish draft i think he took nine months to finish it took a long time it's hard to know because i don't really like sit at a horse for like hours i usually bounce back and forth to different projects like i'm working on my best customs entry right now but i've also been like just like throwing necks on horses i cut heads off of and like sculpting extra mane and tail with the extra epoxy so like i'm always working on a million things at one time Will the sticker club close at any point or can we join at any time in the coming months? You can join at any time. So the thing is that you just have the till the 15th to join for that month's sticker. From any time today, tomorrow, whenever, till the 15th of April to join, you will receive the May sticker. Um, and the reason it's the 15th is just so I have two weeks to organize and like get them sent out. So you have until the 15th to get May. If you pay after the 15th or you join after the 15th, you won't get May, you'll get June. So it's totally like dependent when you sign up on what sticker you'll get. So if you really like the sticker that you see, you're gonna wanna like join the club so you'll get that sticker. And I announce that in all my stories and in my posts to make sure that no one misses out um, all the time. So the 15th of each month is a big point. And so like, for example, people that paid within March, before March 15th, got the April sticker. Um, so even though it's April, you're paying for your May sticker, but it's just because they have to ship out within that month. So um, you can join at any time and you can leave at any time. Um, it's totally flexible. So even if you just wanted one sticker, you could join. Um, the stickers are ordered at the quantities of the club subscribers. So you wanna get in definitely now because and you could order like multiples if you wanted to too. You could order like two of the same sticker if you're into that. Soul food, someone remembered my little um, Giselle custom. Soul food. Mm. She's one of the ones I actually regret selling. I really liked her eye. I did a good job on that eye. I haven't painted a blue eye since. I don't like painting blue eyes, but like I nailed that blue eye. <laughs> so I miss her a little bit. That's the one of the only customs I think I regret selling so far. I just got a little Xyron sticker maker. It's only $15. Hmm, that's interesting. I should look into that. I should write that down. I have a 
Dymo label printer and that thing is my favorite. <laughs> I use it to print all of the monthly sticker club address labels and it's so much fun to watch that thing like spit out labels. It's cool because it uses like an infrared so the labels are like a weird paper and it uses like a infrared or something so it basically burns the print into the sticker so it doesn't use ink so you only ever have to replace the label roll it's a lot of fun i nerd out over like stickers and like stuff like this i don't know it makes me excited do you have any tips if your models get broken or scratched Turn them into body horses and customize them. <laughs> That's what I do. I do have a video on YouTube, how to repair like a broken leg. Um, but repairs are hard because color matching is really hard and I haven't nailed that like briar look that you can get. So I don't have a ton of advice in that case. <laughs> is there a custom you regret making slash starting? I don't think so. I think you learn from each one and if it doesn't work you either like toss it to the side and redo it when you're better or sell it in the state that it is um, or finish it completely and sell it. I'm a big believer in finishing what you start so even if a piece isn't going in the exact direction that I like I will still always finish them and sell them and I think that just proves to yourself that you should like stick with your projects and like you can't just like throw them away as soon as it gets tough because a lot of the time you'll think like this isn't going well and then it'll turn out fine and they'll be actually really nice pieces um so I'm not one that really does that I have a couple pieces that definitely have been tossed to the side per se like they didn't really like spark my fancy as much but I find like I'll toss stuff to the side for a couple of months and then I'll pick it back up in a couple of months and I'll like finish it so it's kind of weird there's a lot of horses in like a weird perpetual stage of half finished half not and that's just how I work and function I'm like looking at the row above that's why I'm looking up um because like I have one that's has really good intentions and he'll be really cool if I ever finish him um but he's been hanging out with half a face for a while now <laughs> um but like Clive I remember was sitting there for a long time and then I picked him up one day and was like I'm just gonna finish this horse how do you deal with the perpetual stage of sanding and resculpting it always drives me mad it drives me mad as well I find it's easier in the summer so I can like sit outside and do it um it can be really disheartening because it takes so long so I don't really like have any specific advice <laughs> Um, I think just like if you get frustrated with it, toss it to the side and eventually you'll be like, I need something to paint and then you'll like motor through it. Sanding sponge has been a lifesaver for me recently. It smooths stuff out so nicely. Um, Bondo also helps because then you don't have to crack out the epoxy every time and Bondo dries in a couple of hours. Yeah, I don't know. I've been struggling because my primers have been glitching quite a bit. So I find it's frustrating to prep when like the primer is like doing weird stuff and causing problems. Um, so I've been trying to like sort that out and that's been holding me back. But I get through it because I want to finish the piece. <laughs> Have you ever broke a model before? Actually, yeah, I broke Bacillus while I was painting him. <laughs> I was gonna cry, like it was super stressful. Um, I didn't take the noblest of precautions in creating reinforcements in his legs and so I was holding him by the legs and he weighs a lot because majority of his body was redone and while I was holding him his like cocked leg cracked <laughs> thank goodness it's in the white so I'd like patched it with epoxy but that leg is going to be forever weak it doesn't touch the ground it doesn't bear any weight so he's okay um, but it is hard when you're doing drastics and they're heavy and they have to support on like a couple legs or a singular leg and then you hold them up by a leg as you paint them. So you have to be really careful with that sense or be like super good about reinforcing everything. So I've been like way better about that now in my like more recent customs. I'm like super enforcing everything so that that doesn't happen again because if Bacillus 
didn't have white on that leg, like the whole paint job would have been like kind of botched because <laughs> you can't really touch up airbrush stuff, which is really frustrating. Is it hard to give them up? Oh my God, it's the hardest. It's the worst part about this. Like I hate selling my work. <laughs> I can't do it like I finish them and I'm like no I want to keep it because it's like it's my work and I put all of my energy and effort into it and it's it's hard to like let that go to someone else that's going to show it and kind of take the credit for it in a sense so a lot of my like really good drastic pieces like I've been holding on to them originally I was going to have a bomb year in 2020 before everything got shut down so I really want to like go to a live show with all of my art own artwork and be like really proud of my presentation on the table and the world gifted me a couple extra years in doing that <laughs> because live shows won't be back for a while now um so I have been doing like a little bit of photo showing but I find that I'm in a position where I had some time to build up inventory so I have finished a bunch of pieces and then the pieces that don't fully speak to me I can sell off and the older pieces I can sell off so as I like do more pieces and add more to my collection, I can sell off the older ones that I don't like as much and I can sell off the ones that I don't like just in general wasn't extremely happy with. And then the ones that like are really special to me, I can keep um, as long as I'm always producing new work. We're good. <laughs> um, but I definitely find that with the traditionals with micros, it's pretty easy to sell them off. Um, and stable mates, I almost always sell because I don't collect that scale. I have like four pieces, I think, that I've kept, and I've painted tons of stable mates. Um, so it's kind of dependent on that. But the traditionals, I have a hard time getting rid of because there's so much time and energy invested into them, and that's the scale that I primarily collect. So I have even had thoughts of like selling my entire OF collection and just keeping customs because how cool would that be? But then I wouldn't be able to do models as much and I would have to get a full-time job. So you win some, you lose some, it's totally dependent. Um, but like, I like to keep models for at least a little while after I finish them to have the glory and like stare at them in my house before I let them go. But it is hard. Soul food was one of them that was hard to let go and I regret it slightly, but I think now I could paint such a better model that I don't fully regret it. Um, and for the most part, I try to keep drastics versus just repaints. At this time, would you ever consider sculpting a traditional briar for briar? Of course. <laughs> That's not my call though. That is briar's call, unfortunately. Um, but in all realness, I'm not quite there yet. I have yet to finish my own original sculpture, which I did finish Warren in 2020, but I haven't finished like a briar like one, like a realistic horse. So until I have a couple of those under my belt, um, I can't say that I would be ready to sculpt for briar. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> Do you ever stop and wonder if you should just completely redo a horse? All the time. <laughs> And in some cases, um, yes, I do agree. It's better to cut your losses and strip and start over. Um, but with a couple pieces, like I don't know if you remember the Clydesdale Oscar. He was called Oscar because I called him the trash horse because he sat on my shelf for like two years and I didn't want to finish him because the paint job wasn't going how I wanted it to. And I was just going to like scrap him and start over. And people were saying, no, like proceed. And I did, and I found new techniques in like becoming a better artist, and I was able to complete him fully. So um, sometimes you can motor through it, and sometimes it is better to just cut your losses. It's totally dependent on the project. I know I did a commission a while back, and I like screwed up the neck somehow. It like the pastel like smeared across the neck, and I was super upset, but I ended up having to strip that model and start over which really sucked, but um, as a commission, it had to be perfect. Some of my personal pieces, I say good enough, but not for commissions. I feel the same way. My artwork is a part of me. There's so many hours, tears, success that are involved in each model. So, so true. And I think it's important that as an artist, you do keep a couple of pieces for yourself. Um, 
you don't have to sell everything and not everything should be for sale. Um, you know, obviously this is kind of turning into my job in a sense. So I do have to like dissociate and get rid of some of them, um, which is fine for me because the payout is worth it in certain cases. But sometimes like the, the money doesn't mean anything when the piece means more. And that's definitely like Jorg and Bacillus. Like I know they can fetch a pretty penny, um, but to me, it's not worth it. Any chance you'll make some of your paintings available as prints or stickers? Yes, that is in the works. Keep your eyes peeled. There's so many things that I need to do like tomorrow. <laughs> um, but yes, that is definitely going to be happening because my original artwork paintings, my splatter horses are so fun and I think they need to be available for purchase. Does your boyfriend have his own collection? <laughs> Not of horses. <laughs> He doesn't like horses. <laughs> I always ask him that, like, is this how you pictured your life? Like, involved with horses? Like, real horses and fake horses? And no. <laughs> he totally supports it, but it's not his thing. It's not his jam. Top three colors you want to see on the Fireheart Mold. All of the colors. Oh my god, I'm so excited for that horse. I'm so excited for Raven, and I'm so excited to have that horse and paint that horse and have a conga on that mold because it's Mustang and it's by Raven and I'm very excited about it. <laughs> Do you all ever plan on sculpting a fluffy looking model? I redid a Misty with sculpted hair growth and it was so much fun. I do actually really want to do that. I have a couple ideas in my head, so hopefully I can realize those soon. All right, I should probably go. I feel my voice leaving the building and my mind leaving the building because now it is my bedtime. Thank you and I hope you enjoyed my little mini unboxing. <laughs> All right, good night everybody.